Transitions are usually difficult times for young people with additional needs, whether they are autistic, have ADHD, other special educational needs, disability, or even perhaps if they are care experienced or looked after. Transitions mean change and coming to terms with new things. It's normal for parents to become anxious as the transition to secondary school approaches. And sometimes when you're very anxious about it, you may assume your child is too. It's important, though sometimes hard, to find that fine balance between preparing and pre-warning your child about future changes and sharing your own fears so much that they become anxious and upset. If your child has some additional needs and they're moving to secondary school, then obviously your concerns might be slightly magnified. I just want to reassure you that the transition that goes on there and the arrangements between primaries and secondary schools start way before that point. We're quite used to doing this process. You might want to have additional meetings with the secondary school. They will be expecting that. We certainly will be having additional meetings with them to ensure that all of the information that we have gets carried over for the benefit of your child. There'll be additional meetings where the children will get over to those new environments to get more comfortable, to get to know people, and often those schools pair the children up with a mentor or a partner student so that they've got a familiar relationship there as well. And in everything, I would say to talk to the school. If you're concerned about something that they haven't quite understood, please go and speak to them. They'll love to have that conversation with you so that they can do the very best they can for your child. The window of tolerance is a way of thinking about having sufficient bandwidth to process incoming information. Our emotions naturally go up and down in intensity and that's okay, that's manageable, as long as we remain within our personal window of tolerance. However, this window will get smaller the longer the person feels stressed or anxious. So, especially for autistic people, or people who become very anxious, it's important to make sure anxiety levels are low enough and sensory input is at a tolerable level in order to think about or try new things. If the intensity of our emotional load goes outside this window, then we can't process feelings and our capacity to deal with thoughts and information goes offline and we feel overwhelmed which might look like burnout, or it might look like hyper, perhaps a bit OTT behaviour. So when thinking about transitions with your child and preparing them, it can be helpful to think about how you can reduce those demands that you can control, for example at home, so that they can be in as calm a frame of mind as possible for coping with and processing all the new experiences and sensory challenges. Supporting them to talk about or work through their feelings, or sometimes just providing a safe space for recuperating and recharging will be important. It's also important to recognise that things they can manage one day may completely overwhelm them the next. This fluctuating capacity can be confusing as a parent, but it can be helpful to remember that progress may not necessarily be linear. Additionally, for you as a parent, this is likely to be a particularly worrying time. And you'll need lots of self-care as well to keep space in your mind for thinking about things from your child's perspective. Talking things through with a trusted friend can really help. And reaching out to other parents in similar circumstances might help you feel less alone and prompt other ideas whether you're reaching out in real time or by reading other people's experiences online, depending on your own window of tolerance. Mm -hmm.